Om Namah Shivaya 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 Adhikarana 6 Entry into Many Bodies Doubt In the aphorism, Jaimini asserts the existence of body and sense organs since the Upanishad speaks of option. Sutra 4.4.11 It has been stated that the liberated soul is possessed of a body. Now, when on becoming threefold and so on, Chandogya 7.26.2 many bodies are created, one would like to know whether these bodies are created lifeless like wooden puppets or they are endowed with animation. Opponent. When this is asked, one may conclude that since the mind and the soul cannot be separated and hence they remain encaged in and associated with a single body, the other bodies must be lifeless. Vedantin. Such being the assertion, the aphorist explains. Sutra 15 Pradi pavadave shastata hi darshayati aveshaha entry, that is, animation occurs. Pradi pavat, like a lamp, he for, tata so. Darshayati, the scripture reveals. Translation, the released soul can animate different bodies like a lamp, for the scripture shows this to be so. Just as a single lamp can appear to be many through its power of transformation, that is, lighting up other lamps from itself, so also the man of knowledge, though one, can through his divine power become many, and enter into all the bodies to animate them. How can this be so? Because the scripture shows it thus that one can become many. He remains one. He becomes threefold, fivefold, etc. Chandogya Upanishad 7.26.2 This cannot be possible if the illustration of the wooden puppets be accepted, nor can it be possible if these are understood to be animated by other souls, and bodies without souls can have no movement. As for the argument that since the mind and soul cannot be separated, there is no possibility for the soul to become associated with many bodies, that creates no difficulty, for as he is possessed of inevitable will, he will create bodies equipped with minds that will act in accord with a single mind. When these are created, the same soul can also appear as their separate rulers in conformity with the differences in the limiting adjuncts. This is the process described in the yoga scriptures as well about the assumption of many bodies by the yogins. Opponent. How again can it be admitted that a liberated man can have such divine powers as of entering into many bodies? Since texts like, then what should one know and through what? Through what should one know that owing to which all this is known? Brihararanyaka 4.5.15 But there is not that second thing separated from it which it can know. Brihararanyaka 4.3.30 It becomes transparent like water. One, the witness, and without a second. Brihadaranyaka 4.3.32 and other texts of this kind deny the existence of particularized knowledge. Vedantin. Hence comes the answer of the aphorist. Sutra 16. Svapyasyam patyorana tarapekshama vishkritam hi anyatar apeksham from either of the two viewpoints, svaapyaya sampatyo, of deep sleep and absolute union, he, because, avishkritam, this is made clear in the Upanishad. 
Translation The declaration of the absence of particularized knowledge is made from either of the two points of view, that is to say, deep sleep and absolute union, for this is made clear in the Upanishad. Svapyaya, literally merger in oneself, means deep sleep, as is shown in the Upanishadic text, he becomes merged in his self, and that is why they speak of him thus, he is deep asleep, literally, he is in his self. Chandogya 681. And sampati, literally attainment of a state, means liberation, as shown by the Upanishadic text, having been Brahman, he becomes Brahman. Brihararanyaka 446. Having in view either of these two states, it is asserted thus that there is an absence of particularized knowledge. This is said sometimes in relation to the state of deep sleep and sometimes to absolute liberation. How is this known? Because this is made clear by the Upanishad under a context dealing with that very subject in such sentences as, the self comes out as a separate entity from these elements, and the separateness is destroyed with them. After attaining this oneness, it has no more particular consciousness. Brihadaranyaka 2.4.12 But when to the knower of Brahman, everything has become the self. Brihadaranyaka 2.4.14 Where, falling asleep, he craves no desire and sees no dream. Brihadaranyaka 4.3.19, Mandukyopanishad 5. But the state in which the divine powers are asserted is a different state, like heaven, etc., that comes as a result of the maturity in meditation on the qualified Brahman. Hence, there is no defect. Namaste. Well, we've gone over some pretty far-out ideas in this fourth pada, but this one takes the cake, huh? Multiple bodies simultaneously operated by the same mind. Now, this is a radical concept, but it's right there in the Upanishad. He remains single or becomes fivefold, tenfold, etc., whatever he likes. But isn't this Brahman's first trick? Huh? Becoming many? The Upanishad states, I am one. Let me become many. And this is the Icha Shakti, the birth of Maya. Because Brahman is one, irrevocably, <laughs> that cannot change. But it can create the illusion of there being many and then create several identities. Well, many identities. <laughs> They're all illusion. They're all upadis, coverings, limiting adjuncts to the actual reality, which is Brahman alone. But, for the t duration of the creation, they are real, and they are experienced as real, aren't they? <laughs> if you ask anybody, do you really exist? Of course, they're going to say yes. They exist for themselves. Because deep down at the root, the substrate, the foundation of consciousness is Turiya, and Turiya is Brahman, and Brahman is consciousness of self, consciousness of consciousness, awareness of awareness. So the self knows that it exists because it is Brahman, and it needs no other. It is fully complete all by itself. So then why does Brahman create duality and illusion and multiplicity and time and space, etc.? To see itself, to experience itself from the point of view 
of another. This is the actual purpose behind creation. Why? To realize itself. Because Brahman, although it is aware of its existence, aware of its consciousness and bliss, is not aware of itself as viewed by another. So he creates maya like a mirror to hold up to himself and to see his own reflection and who he is from the point of view of a created being. So he creates millions and billions, actually countless created beings and countless galaxies and stars and planets and so on for them to live on. And then as their consciousness from within watches himself, observes himself. Why? To know himself, to realize himself. Isn't it that our self-realization depends on seeing ourselves in the mirror of Brahman? Because that is an absolutely unbiased, undistorted mirror and will show us the truth. Freed from all illusion and boundaries. Boundaries means bondage. It means conditioning. It means upadis, limiting our being, our consciousness, and our bliss. So that's why we always feel the impetus to gain more of these things, being, consciousness, and bliss, even though, actually, we are Brahman that has complete being, knowledge, and bliss, Satchitananda. So why do we do this? Because the illusion of scarcity, the illusion of boundaries, the illusion of individuality. Now, when an individual soul attains Brahman or realizes Brahman, aham brahmasmi, at that same time, he becomes capable of dividing himself, just like Brahman, into many, or at least several, huh? of the same mind. Just imagine what you could do if you could clone yourself. The same mind in several bodies. Now, wouldn't that take care of the whole sense gratification thing? <laughs> the whole relationship thing? The whole experience and desire thing. This is why it's said that Brahman has no desires. Because any desire that might arise within Brahman is immediately satisfied. And because of this, Brahman has no residual desires. Nothing to pursue or hunt or attain or obtain. Huh? or develop or transform or add to itself because it is already complete. And, I mean, even if, if Brahman had the desire, you know, to uh, be the leader of the universe, in other words, God, he can easily satisfy that simply by creating the universe and then experiencing it from both within and without. This is the extraordinary position of Brahman, and also the extraordinary nature of one who realizes Brahman. And this is all perfectly described in the Upanishads. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>